Hello all, the practitioner here, Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, 40 and skeptic and technical agnostic. I never actually thought I'd be saying this, but um, I mean I've said that granted certain psi wheel videos and other things have come close to being possible proof for telekinesis, but I'd have to say that the strongest proof to date has come from the video which I've listed over here. Um, the guy who wrote it is a the guy who conducted the experiment is a man by the name of uh, Mind Freak four one six nine six six better known as CJ. Um, he and I have been having an ongoing discussion for the past while. Um, we're both forty and skeptics, um, uh, not really believers in psi, but we're open to the possibility and we're constantly still experimenting on it for in the event that a, it may be real or that there may be another explanation that neither of us has thought of. Um, I should uh, mention that I also have an entire database of email conversations and messages between myself and Mindfreak over this last particular video. And um, if you want, I can. Uh, if you want, message me, and I will forward you the. Um, I will cut and paste the message comments to the point where uh, to show and the comments from the original videos as well uh, to show where um, I've already dealt. Um, where I've actually dealt with practically, uh, so this way you can see all the um, requirements that I suggested uh, that be dealt with in here owing to the um, probability of um, uh, various things that could uh, possibly account for the um, for the uh, psi wheel effects that you're seeing here. Um, the the psi wheel in particular, I should explain a little bit about what Mindfreak has been trying to do here. Um, a while back, Mindfreak and I were both on a telekinetic debunk and uh, I was just starting on mine, he was just finishing on his. And um, to, to culminate his work, he had done a video which showed a psi wheel under a glass, a little micro psi wheel, and then he started moving his hands around it to demonstrate that the uh, psi wheel is generally caused by heat from the hands. Uh, however, um, he later then messaged me uh, a little while later saying he'd been conducting experiments um, on psi wheels at a greater distance just to see if there was anything to it, just for the hell of it. You know, he wanted to see if there was anything besides heat from the hands which could account for this. And lo and behold, he started getting results. So he uh, gave me a link to one of his videos um, which had talked about uh, standing a few feet back and pulling the hand away to eliminate the heat and, uh, you know, and putting, your, uh, putting it, uh, his you know, shirt over his nose, of course, to avoid air vibrations and the like. Now I should mention um, that if you do manage to hold your hand back from a distance, um, if you hold it fair enough back, even micro movements will not actually cause a vibration. The problem comes in um, with a big psi wheel vis-a-vis -vis the possibility of breathing through your shirt. Uh, the reason I can do this, and I can prove this right now, I will give you a demonstration, is I'll take a shirt, put it over my face. I'd like you to take a close look at this psi wheel here. You can see that my shirt's over my face, but when I do this, so let me balance it perfectly so this way it's still still. That was one of my biggest concerns when I actually discovered that. Uh, I thought that that might have been a possibility, given the fact that he was standing a few feet away, but it was a big psi wheel. It was a big tinfoil psi wheel that he was working with. So my concerns were that even micro breaths would affect this. So um, what I suggested to him was uh, a couple of things. Um, if he could do it under a glass and then do that same uh, thing of keeping the hand away um, to avoid heat and air movement, uh, that would be good and simultaneously move distance. Um, he wasn't able to do that, but um, I did suggest another alternative uh, for in the event that he was working with something that size. I suggested something slightly smaller than um, putting his, uh, his nose over his, uh, over his thing again, holding his breath. Uh, and then I suggested moving away from the psi wheel. Um, I suggested that you know there might be a maximum limit to what this is, and you know it might be just another type of heat exchange thing. You know, um, more heat generated by the body combined with um, improper balancing. It is a big tinfoil psi wheel. I mean, like this wouldn't be surprising that static could uh, stretch over grit distances. However, um, he's met every one of my criteria um, on major points. If you take a look at the very end of this video, you'll notice that the psi wheel actually moves. It's micro amount, but it does move. And it moves, uh, it moves in both cases when he's away. It also moves when his hand is away off camera, and um, he also is deliberately not breathing. There's another thing you can tell about this. You can tell the surrounding sound in the local area. If he had been breathing, uh, you notice that I had to breathe fairly heavily in order to be able to, um, if you actually play this clip over and watch closely, you notice I had to breathe heavily in order to be able to get this. Um, if there had actually been breathing, it would have been caught up by the camera. It would have been caught by the camera um, as breathing on the psi wheel um, because of the fact that there was sound surrounding. So that took that out. Um, as for strings, strings would have pulled it a great deal farther and would have been a much more obvious effect. So um, I can suggest, and 
not to mention the fact that I happen to know how Mind Freak works, and he's also done this demonstration with Heat of Hands before, just to generate, uh, just to show the physical concept of this. So, um, barring trickery, which I'm considering unlikely, um, barring um, the the the, the uh, imbalancing problem, uh, you know, in relation to tinfoil and the like. I mean, he did make it smaller this time to uh, to take that into account. Um, the fact that he did stay away and you know did did um, both local and far. Now, I mean, I know some people could say that maybe the moving backwards uh, caused a sidewheel point, but uh, it caused the sidewheel to move. Um, however, if you'll notice um, in large chunks of it, the sidewheel only moves after a period of stabilization where it's actually stopped while he's moving, and then um, after he stopped for like a good 5-10 seconds, if you actually follow the time of the video, then it starts moving. So, um, where does this leave me in relation to telekinesis? Well, um, I'm going to have to critically evaluate my position. Um, of course, a video is not proof of any. Uh, of course, one can uh, one can say that a video is not proof of anything. That there was um, some means of uh, of digital editing, but given the lack of evidence available for that, um, you know, uh, I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of possibilities. But I want to make something perfectly clear. Uh, Marcelo Truzzi at one point, um, uh, another uh, was it another skeptic? I don't uh, no, was it? Damn it! Which one of the fellow skeptics was it? Um, who basically said that um, coming up with a proof, uh, coming up with the possibility that somebody could have cheated or that there was some sort of artifact, does not necessarily mean that it was the case and that it uh, therefore outweighs the probability in this particular case. It did uh, manage to deal with all the artifacts I had suggested as a magician, uh, being aware and being chemistry and uh, a science student, being aware of uh, of ways that physical effects could be taking place here. Um, it did eliminate um, or brought them down to almost absolutely nil, uh, the uh, the physical factors which could take into account. And barring experimental fraud, which I, you know, strongly doubt in this case, I mean, you'd have to start saying, like, oh, we use computer generation, you know, but there's no telltale signs of computer generation. Um, I mean, even even the best computer digitally edited videos, there's always some sort of telltale sign which you can always uh, work with, even the best seamless ones. I mean, like, there's always a way of checking. Um, but the thing is, you know, uh, no telltale signs here, no... Um, you know, I, I recognize digital editing from being a filmmaker myself. No um, signs of, of, of trickery. Uh, most of the, uh, the techniques I suggested about uh, removing distance in order to avoid uh, heat and breath, um, uh, using a smaller side wheel to avoid proper imbalancing problems, um, you know, shutting all doors and windows, which was what he did in the initial one, and he still did here. Um, making sure that people weren't around in the local area. Um, if you do hear a faint voice over the thing, it's, it's quite a ways away. Um, it, or maybe it's a voice, I'm not sure, maybe I'm just hearing things. But the point is that, you know, it sounds like there may have been a faint, a faint voice, but it was far enough in the background that it couldn't really cause any air vibrations even in through the room. So, um, you know, he flipped to himself a couple of times to show that he still had the, uh, the shirt over his mouth, even at the great distance, so that rules that out. Um, I mean, like, you know, I, I've, I've double-checked a large possible means. I've even done uh, trickery techniques of my own, um, uh, you know, of attempting to fake this sort of thing. Um, you know, as a magician, I recognize a large chunk of the techniques to be able to use to, be, to fool side wheels. But given where he was at, um, you know, given where he was at and given the, uh, the micro amounts that it moved, um, you know, even given the fact that there was no breath actually caught on the camera that would have, you know, caught, you know, he would have to blow very hard and very focused from that distance to be able to even able to get the side wheel to move that micro amount. So, um, you know, and the camera would have caught that, uh, in addition to the fact that he had this, you know, thing over his nose and mouth, and the distance would have, uh, would have basically prevented uh, any breath coming from out and influencing the side wheel or anything like that, even, um, you know, like he took all the necessary controls. So from that, um, I'd have to say it was uh, the closest thing I've seen to a, gen a genuine demonstration of telekinesis. My suggestion to Mind Freak at this point is to uh, go to one of the local uh, universities. I'm not going to suggest the one million dollar challenge because as I've already stated before, there's a problem with experimenter bias in there. Um, but yeah, you know what? I'd have to say that based on the current evidence, I would have to say that my position on uh, telekinesis, um, although I'm not con entirely convinced, I will say this much. Uh, my position, um, my original position to being uh, not necessarily open to macro PK, uh, you know, as there being no physical cause for it or anything like that, you know, contravening the laws of physics, well, not to mention uh, the reason I refuted that particular due to Hume's fallacy. Um, I said I wanted greater evidence, and I have been presented with it, so let's say that this way I'm considerably more open to the possibility of real telekinesis. However, uh, for the most part of you guys with videos with your hands close to the side wheels and all that sort of shit, I'm still going to believe that the bulk of you are um, are uh, frauds or or just you know either uh, willfully or unwillfully um, influencing it through natural means, through normal uh, well-known means. But I'm much more open to the possibility now. Toodles.